Good morning. This Wednesday morning, it's a bright and beautiful day, and we're thankful for it. It's April the 8th. Had to look, didn't I? We all lose track of time these days. In our Sunday school lessons in the Bible Studies for Life, this week we're studying the truth of the resurrection. You know, this is uh, Passion Week. We mentioned that earlier in the week. And we're heading toward the death and burial of Jesus as we think on these things and study God's Word. And Sunday morning, Easter Sunday, the resurrection. So here's some thoughts about the truth of the resurrection from this Bible study. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. So if you get your Bibles and turn there today, we'll take a look at the first eight verses of 1 Corinthians chapter 15. In verse 1, there is a need to proclaim the gospel. Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand. He says there is a need to preach the gospel. There's a need for us to tell the gospel. People are dying, separated from God. They're dying in their sins. And there is an answer to that. There is an antidote. There is a help. We need to share the gospel and proclaim it. Then there is a need to believe the gospel. We can share the gospel, but if there's no faith to back it up, there's no salvation. There's a need to believe it. And in verse 2 it says, And by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. You see, we can talk about faith. We can talk about believing. We can say the words. But the change in our life backs that up. The reality of faith is seen in our lives, not just heard off of our lips. So there's a need to believe the gospel that's being proclaimed. Then there is a need to understand the gospel. In verse 3, Paul says, And I delivered to you as of the first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins. He died not to help us with our day, not to make life better, but to take our sins away, to wash us white as snow in accordance with the scriptures. But he not only died, but he was buried. He was in the tomb. His body was uh, laid there with the thought that it's going to decay. Life was over for Jesus as far as they knew. And he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. Paul says... He learned from the Lord. The disciples who were still alive said that Jesus rose on the third day. On the Lord's day, he came out of the tomb. Not dead as they thought, but very much alive and changed in his glory, ready to go back to heaven. So there's a need to understand this. You see, the gospel isn't just believing in God. Which God? The gospel isn't just believing that Jesus was a good man that walked on this earth and did good things. No. It's believing that he came to die for our sins. He was the Son of God. And that he was de dead and buried and rose again the third day. And now resides in heaven sitting at the right hand of God. This is the gospel. That through faith in him, our sins will be forgiven. Then there is the need to witness the gospel. After we have have heard it and we believed it and we understand it. It says in verse 5, And that he appeared to Cephas then and to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James and then to all the apostles. And last of all, as one untimely born, he appeared also to me. Paul is saying Jesus appeared to all these people. There is evidence of him. They witnessed this. They shared this with us. How did Paul find out that he appeared to 500 brothers at one time? He heard the news. People were talking about it. They didn't talk about the gladiator games and whether uh, the Romans were winning or the Jews were winning in the gladiator. They didn't talk about any of that. They talked about Jesus coming back to life. They talked about the wonder of it. They weren't interested in football or baseball or basketball or 
this movie or that movie. They were interested in the awesomeness of Jesus Christ, God's Son, and His resurrection. And they talked about it among themselves. And Paul says, as one untimely born, he appeared to me. I was saved in the 11th grade when I was in high school. Been to church off and on all my life. Heard, heard the good news, but without faith. But in the 11th grade, I gave my life to Jesus and put my faith and trust in him. Untimely born. I, I didn't see Jesus walk on this earth. That wasn't my time. But he still appeared to me in 1971 in Huntsville, Alabama. Jesus appeared to me in spirit, speaking to my heart and drawing me to salvation. He's still appearing to people today, not visually, but the Holy Spirit draws them and woos them unto himself as he works salvation in their lives. There's a need to know and believe the gospel today. A need for us not only to know the gospel and be saved, but to bear witness of it and to share our faith so others will be saved. This is the truth of the resurrection, that the gospel brings salvation and with salvation, a hope of our resurrection one day to be with him forever and ever. Enjoy the truth of the resurrection. Enjoy sharing the gospel and be blessed today.